This last concept we're covering in this chapter is called optical resolution. It turns out if we are focusing light through a lens, as the light comes through, we do get refraction. So our converging lens causes the light to focus. But if you recall from the couple chapters ago, we talked about interference patterns due to a circular aperture. Sorry, circular aperture. When we have light shining through a circular opening, we get a diffraction pattern because of how the light ends up spreading. Through the circular aperture, we end up with a bullseye pattern. We found that the angle, the minimum angle, well, not the minimum, but the angle for circular diffraction was approximately 1.22 lambda over d. What we meant by this angle is the light coming straight from the slit or circular opening to the middle of the bright spot and then the line that goes to the first dark spot, this angle. Now this angle must be ma uh, measured in radians. Wow. For this to be considered or for it to be an accurate statement. It turns out our lenses are circular. As light goes through, we do get refraction of light but the fact that the lenses are circular, we also get this diffraction pattern. What this means is any light that is focused through a converging lens has what is called a minimum spot size. meaning we actually cannot make the light focus into one teeny, like exactly one exact point. Where it focuses is going to have a specific width to it. The width of this minimum size comes down to this relationship between diffraction as well as the focal length. So we end up seeing this as our equation, 2.44 lambda f over d. Now by w, we mean the width of the spot. The spot is going to be the central maximum that we're seeing. So here, if we were to equate this to a y1 over distance, well, the distance that it focuses, the lens itself, is the focal length if light is coming from very far away. So we would end up with the ratio of y over l, but l is essentially f in this case. So y1 the distance from the center of the bullseye pattern to the first dark spot would be 1.22 lambda f over d. When we talk about the width, that's just two times y1, because the width we're measuring from dark spot to the opposite dark spot. So, the dark spots are the same distance y1 from the center, so we just need to double that. And that's where this equation comes from. This minimum spot size is the smallest 
size or width of a focusing of the light. It depends upon the focal length of the lens because that's where the light will be focused and it depends upon the diameter of the lens. The diameter goes back to the circular aperture. So we end up with some limitations in our optical instruments just because of this diffraction and how the light will be focused. So we actually have limitations on microscopes, for example, how small of something we can measure. We also have limitations on using telescopes to try to what we call resolve to stars. So again, this concept of resolution. So the other aspect that comes into play is if we have light coming from two stars, for example, that light shines through an objective lens and each light, each beam of, well, not just one beam, the light from each star will create its own bullseye pattern. So we would get a maximum intensity. If you remember, the intensity decreases as we go out. So I'm trying to represent intensity here. So this represents the central max. Light coming from the other star is also coming in through here and it's creating its own pattern. It has its own central max. If these central maxes overlap, that means we cannot tell there are two stars there. because they do not have their own individual central maximums that we can distinguish. So what we say this would be, would, we would say we cannot resolve them. If we can resolve, then that means they would produce, let me write, rewrite that. If we can resolve them, the central maxes do not over lap. So ultimately what comes into play is whether this angle out here, the light rays coming from both stars towards this objective, compares to the minimum theta min in terms of being able to go from here to the dark spot. Let me grab a picture from your book that's drawn a bit better to show you this. All right, sorry for the jump in size yet again. So this is the picture from our textbook. We have our objects one and two, the light from the two stars. It's obviously not drawn to scale, but the angle in my picture to the left, the angle of the light coming from those two sources, they're calling alpha. 
they're drawing the pictures such that they're measuring from the central max of image one, so object one, to the first minimum of the same object, which they're happening to place the second max, the max from object two, in that first minimum. We call this marginally, well, it's right here, marginally resolved. I don't need to write it out again. Now, going back to the circular diffraction pattern, this minimum angle was 1.22 lambda wavelength over D, diameter. So here, diameter, we're talking the diameter of the lens. If the angle alpha is equal to this, then we get this situation that we say we have marginally resolved. What that looks like, I'm realizing I can just go to the textbook. Here we go. So this is photographs of two point sources of light. This top situation is when they, oh dear, is when they are resolved. Meaning their central maxes do not overlap, which we can see that. We can see the two distinct bullseye patterns. They start running into each other in the middle but we can see those central maximas. This situation is when alpha, the angle between the light coming from the two sources is greater than that minimum angle that we get with the circular diffraction patterns, the circular aperture. Marginally resolved, this is the picture I was just showing you, when the max of the second source occurs at the minimum of the first source. So we can tell that there's not too distinct per se, but we can see that there's a little bit of perhaps two there. This bottom situation not resolved when alpha is smaller, those central max overlap enough that they just look like one big source of light. So an example of this is if you go out and look at the North Star, just with your eyes, you would see one star. But there's more than one star there. If you have binoculars, you might see a couple stars. I don't know if binoculars have a large enough diameter, the lenses that the light will pass through first for that to show up. A telescope would definitely show us. It's all gonna depend upon the diameter of that lens opening. Now this is also true if we're talking about a mirror as the objective, it would be the diameter of the mirror that we're using. Now in the test notes, you're gonna see another equation and it's right next to this equation, because we're talking about resolution. D min is approximately theta min times S. What this represents, if I come back to my picture here and erase, the minimum distance between these two stars that we can resolve and this is marginally resolved, will be approximately this angle that we have for the first dark spot for one of the sources, times S. S is the distance from the lens out to the sources of light. If I draw in the picture I was making above, it would be this distance, demon would be this distance. So if we equate these, so 
So D, capital D here is the diameter the diameter of whatever the light is passing through first. If you're looking through the telescope, it is the diameter of the objective lens or mirror. If you're looking through binoculars, it's the diameter of the lenses that are out towards the object. If you're looking through just your eyes, it's the diameter of your pupil. We can equate this to the d min over s. I'm just solving for theta. A specific diameter telescope or binoculars or pupils, there's a minimum distance between the point sources So in my example, it's the two stars, the distance between the two stars, and this is the distance from the lens or mirror or eyes to the objects. And this is the diameter of the lens or mirror or eyes. Now this is not applicable to only stars. I have a fun representation as well. Let me show you this. So this picture falls in this category of resolution. I like it because it's fun and I love dogs, hence I'm kind of a crazy lady that way. But it falls into this category of resolution because this picture is made of candy sprinkles, little dots of candy. So when we look at the picture, if we're far enough away, we cannot tell that there's individual dots of candy. It's just a regular picture. I mean, there's some parts that look pixelated and kind of dots, but that's more the fact that we have a photo of it. But as we get closer and closer, we can see those individual spheres, little candy balls. This was a graduate project of somebody in a field of art. Now, let me see how to go back. So going back to this equation, this concept is still resolution. D minimum would be the distance from one candy sphere to the next. S would be how far I stand from the picture. So essentially my eyeballs to the picture. D, capital D, would be the diameter of my pupils in my eyes. Now the wavelength would be the primary wavelength we're looking at. Granted, there's multiple different colors there. So we would look at for the region, for example, where there were red spheres next to each other and use the wavelength of light for that red. So in this, you may have seen other pictures before that they use dots of color you have to stand a certain distance in order to be able to see that there are specific points of color as opposed to full-on brush strokes. 
and that's going to depend on the diameter of your pupil. So if you went to an art museum with a friend and were looking at pictures, potentially you might look need to stand slightly different distances away to see that there's dots of color because your pupil diameters might be a bit different. So this concept of resolution My computer is really slow. Resolution means we can see the individual dots of color. That's what we mean. 